Greetings. This is September 5th at 11 a.m. We are looking at the Big Bar Cam. There's a lot of smoke and haze. I'm suspecting that's coming from the southeast. The smoldering that's going on around High Heum and on the top of the hill. If we jump to the Big Bar Cam, I can see it looks like smoke out in the trees. And again, this is probably blowing over from the east, southeast, as that uh, subtle wind has moved in and started to push the air westward. Looking at the Sheridan Cam west towards Lone Butte, 93 mile, I'm actually seeing a bit of sunshine come in there, some shadows. It's uh, clearing up this area. Uh, last night I went on to the VIIR system. I got these images. This is uh, looking at the northern flank. Sheridan's on your right hand side, Green Lakes on your left hand side, and I'm not seeing any new six hour. Here we've rolled down to uh, Mount Jim and south of Green Lake. Uh, some 12 hour on the fringes on the eastern side of this and uh, a lot of yellow 24 hour but no red six hour. So I'm suspect I'm aut automatically of this uh, satellite infrared update. Uh, moving further down uh, Young Lake, no change and uh, Bonaparte Valley still that 24 hour on the ridge line moving further south uh, east of Loon Lake looks like it's slowing down on this infrared system around High Heum as well uh, not a lot of new growth or uh, it's all 12 hour and if we go down to the southern flank Battle Creek area Clemens Brasso uh, again not a lot of activity I, I'm seeing some you know, subtle movement towards Chartrand. If we go to the NRC's data, this is from last night, taking a look at the overall of their indication of where the Elephant Hill perimeter might be, it's something that we can compare against uh, official sources. Uh, taking away the perimeter, we can see where all the activity is now on the Elephant Hill wildfire. And remember, some of this can be obscured by smoke. We might be only seeing the fringe areas on those fire pockets. If we zoom in to a map of September 4th yesterday, and if you'll notice in this imagery, just right of center, there is a hot spot north of Jack Frost Lake. Um, I went to the Beto Tree Cam and uh, wanted to zoom in and see if I could see anything on the horizon. And yes, I do see one small dot and we'll zoom in. It uh, is displaying in what could be that uh, Jack Frost Lake area. So there was a spot of light. If we jump to today's infrared on the NRC interactive map, uh, that spot is gone. However, uh, we've zoomed out and at the top right hand portion of your screen, I am seeing no infrared being displayed around Jack Frost, but south, it almost looks like a ring of control strategies. Let's zoom in and see what's going on at the Rayfield River. I see activity that's moved to the eastern side. It's grouping into fire pockets uh, that could be crews trying to isolate and starve out these fuel areas. Uh, there's a lot of uh, random isolated spots on the fringes of this fire pocket. And uh, there's no time delineation on this map. Uh, we're just seeing it as it was picked up and displayed on satellite. Here we are looking at south of Green Lake, uh, Mount Jim, a lot of activity around there, kind of spread out, random. And if we look to the southwest, we see around Hutchison Lake. Not as much activity that as displayed on the Google VIIRS KML. Uh, that has more detail. We're moving further south now. I'm looking at the area east of High Heum, and I see that group that's uh, to the southeast. It, it almost looks like it wants to infringe upon Chartrand Lake. Not any growth apparent however there are those isolated hot spots that look like they were tossed eastward um, on all those fire pockets while we're in this system let's take a look at what else is being displayed and i'm noticing something that 
late in the afternoon the fire can spark up they call it the witching hour and late in the summer it appears that washington idaho montana have sparked up uh, i'm seeing a lot of activity towards the southern area of course in manitoba saskatchewan they're very busy with some very volatile fires in that area Central British Columbia appears to have slowed down considerably. However, there is a lot of smoke haze in the area. There's cloud cover, so we're not perceiving all infrared. If we move down to the southeastern corner of the province, uh, Selkirk's Rockies, a lot of activity around here. I wish I could examine and analyze every fire that's going on in the province, it's just not possible. There's so much uh, variable. South of Little Big White, I am seeing expansion, which could be in all areas. It looks like it's gone to the southeastwards. It's throwing out hot spots ahead of it. It appears to be quite volatile. Uh, looking over at Peachland, also I'm seeing growth, uh, like lighting a piece of paper in the center. It's moving outwards, looking for new fuel. I am seeing hot spots along the western side of Garnet Lake, and it looks like it's moved over the hill into the Dark Valley. That's a very dense forested area. We will take a look at Peachland and the fire that's uh, started up south of Little Big White uh, to the east of Grayback Mountain. And again, we are looking at dots on a screen. They may not represent what's actually occurring on the ground. These indications could be 500 meters to a kilometer off, but we can use it for information on where apparent growth might be. We've moved southwest to the border with the United States. This is the fire <coughs> south of Cathedral Lakes. And we were noticing isolated hot spots to the west of this fire and they appear to have developed into uh, fully active uh, fires. This looks to turn into a complex fire. Uh, it's something to watch and it's probably issuing a lot of smoke in the region and that now may be blowing westwards with this eastern southeastern breeze. We're moving eastwards now to two fires uh, that have been occurring east of Canal Flats and southeast of Fairmont. There are large fires in the mountains. I like to check different locations to see if they're displaying the same behavior as uh, the one we're more familiar with at the Elephant Hill. All of these are very challenging and um, may be encroaching upon sensitive vital areas towns communities such as this one in moi it appears to be approaching within 500 meters of the water in the columbia river valley and i'm seeing a hot spot that's actually close to the tracks and the highway on the eastern side of that water body we are back now looking at the elephant hill wildfire and the perimeter all of this data has to be verified by multiple sources, but we do get an indication of where the recent activity is. Checking with Windy, uh, the breeze is coming in three kilometers an hour from the southeast, but if you can see this large S curve, and that will change wind direction depending on your location in the Elephant Hill wildfire. So low velocity right now, but if you look to the right of your screen, there is some increased speed coming in. That's uh, over to uh, north of the Bonaparte, east of Bridge Lake. It appears uh, nine kilometers an hour, and that's moving westward. So we want to be wary of that. That should probably be reaching us around lunchtime, one o'clock, and increase through the afternoon, and then slow down again. By 3 o'clock, we could see 8, 9 kilometers an hour with gusts up to 25 kilometers an hour. I'm looking for that wind event on Thursday. It could go up to 14 kilometers an hour with gusts up to 35. This should be coming from the northwest. So we've got winds going in many directions, and 
hopefully they're aiding crews by blowing this fire back in on itself. And I will be back when I have new information. Uh, please check the links below, check out the regional bulletins and alerts, and check out the resources. Thank you very much for watching, and please be safe, everyone.